Our next speaker is a filmmaker, storyteller, design entrepreneur, currently based here in Vancouver. After a decade of being immersed in design, both interior and product, in cities ranging from Paris to New York to Berlin to Barcelona, his growing obsession for visual storytelling came to the forefront over a three-year period while working at Chanel. It was there, alongside the creative talents who brought to life the compelling and defining stories that solidify the brand, where he was inspired to put in the long hours needed to learn a new craft, borrowing gear, gathering insight, until finally he decided to make the move to Vancouver, his first new camera in hand ready to apply his skills. Encouraged by some early collaborations with local talents and with the help of many great friends and colleagues, he founded New Document in 2010, a small production company helping artisans and designers tell their stories. Please welcome Gwenel Lewis. Thank you and hello. Uh, thanks to my friends. <laughs> and thank you, Vancouver, for welcome me, uh, welcoming me in the uh, community. So um, I allowed me uh, a little frame that was just a frame that I designed for myself because I knew I was going to mess up the painting. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is just a little breather I gave myself to, uh, to get a chance to start. So uh, anyways, so, um, so my name is Guanel and I'm from Paris. And I, when I moved to New York, I was 23. And the um, combination of uh, Paris and my name was pretty amazing, and I didn't expect it to be that way, because people were going, oh my god, Paris, I love Paris. And it was like pretty general, like overall, like and any person I'd meet at the time was like, had something in mind about Paris. So it got me intrigued of what like the image of Paris, because some of those people had never been. So <laughs> they, they'd only have the image, but it triggered an emotion that was very strong and very joyful. And this is something I want to talk to you about tonight. So all of those frames are designed for tonight, aside from two. Basically, to convey the, uh, like the relationship that we have, the emotions that we project on an image, and the uh, emotions that we get from an image. So, uh, so this is an image that I did last week with a, a daughter of, uh, of a friend. So basically, uh, she's fine. Uh, she, <laughs> uh, but she could have hurt herself, and if she had, the image she would have associated for the rest of her life with a swing would have been pretty bad. So essentially, like, what I'm trying to say here is that you know, your personal experience changes uh, the way you approach something. So it also builds with the idea that uh, children are raised with images. So there's an image that represents something, and then the parent like, adds something onto it, like maybe a sound, maybe, ooh, the big bad wolf. So you add in something evil and good, and you add in something that is uh, tagged onto it for the rest of your life. And when you grow, those images like, and those the tags that you put together are basically just different. But like, if I ask you to recognize the basketball player, it takes you a split second. Because this is something you do. Like, you compare this basketball player to like, an idea that you have in your head of a basketball player. Matches, you recognize the person, right? So this is something that leads to stereotypes, which is not a good thing. Because if you also consider, like, for instance, it, even with no knowledge whatsoever of, of uh, ergonomics, you can walk down a staircase with no problem because the first three or four steps, you analyze the sequence and then you, you imagine that it's all going to be the same, right? So if one of the steps is even half an inch off, you probably fall, which is exactly what happens in stereotypes when you have an idea and it's changed. So this is, for example, something that, is, uh, that happened in 99 in France. There was like a massive storm. That knocked down many trees, but it happened over the course of the winter time. So it didn't look like anything. So I painted this little thing quickly to show you something very abstract. So national television decided to use images from 1987 of a similar storm that happened in the summertime. So that people would relate to the event and say, oh yeah, those trees are green. Yes, oh, it's a disaster. So they, they actually controlled the emotion with a representation of something that was similar. So there's kind of a gap between like, reality and what you want uh, people to understand, even on national like, news. So that was kind of shocking for me. This is, for instance, the image of a fish. Uh, for, there was a survey conducted in, in Paris, and a lot of uh, kids uh, had never seen a fish before, and all they could see is a rectangle, uh, like uh, a fish finger in the plates, and that's their representation of a fish. So there was a disconnect between the reality, it would ne never happen in Vancouver, but it happened in Paris. 
So this this what got me got me into storytelling. So I'm from the design. I have a design background myself. And when I came here in Vancouver, I met Omer Harbel and Randy Bishop, who ran Bocci. And they gave me the great opportunity of telling the story behind the scenes. So basically, giving me a chance of telling the story and the, like giving a chance of people to approach their products with a different vision of it. So different vision of it, showing people how it's made. And then you have like a, a, a stronger relationship to it, a different relationship to it, which I believe is the only way that a project becomes sustainable because the more you love it, the more you understand it, the more you want to keep it. And this is the only way. You don't throw it away, you actually want to keep it because it's great. So this is a little uh, sketch I did just for you to understand also another concept I'm interested in. So you have an abstract image on the left and then, for me, an image doesn't exist by itself. It exists, it defines itself without other images. So I put like, you know, those little uh, images on the side. So there's a fair chance that you're gonna approach this image the way I want you to. And then you change the images associated with it. And those images could be directly associated with it physically, or they could also be like the, if you're exposed to violence, like all the time. This same frame that I showed you before might have been the same approach. So you probably see it as a very violent kind of maybe something that, that's close to blood, even though hopefully none of you have seen uh, as much blood. So this is again the same child. It's still fine. <laughs> this is a <laughs> and the mother. Her mother is great. She's an architect. She just moved here looking for a job. Anyways, <laughs> so um, so you probably like now like look at this photography and associate the image of a cigarette with the image of raising a child, which is something that's kind of not very, very good in your head. But now if you look at this images, now, it's probably nothing like this girl is playing with an iPad, also made the colors much more yellow and warm, so, but if tomorrow, like we, we learn with uh, science that Wi-Fi kills, then this image, like graded differently perhaps, will have a different reaction. And so also using sketches, so I sketched this little guy, probably want to hug him, he's like a happy little animal. So you have like an approach, and you have an approach to him, and it's just like a visual that you sketch, right? So now I'm gonna do, an, I did another sketch to change the approach that you have to that same animal. Right, <laughs> so I'm using like red. Red is the color in our, like Northern America associated with danger. I'm using like very nervous strokes, obviously like an, an attack. But it also, it changes, even though it's a cartoon, it changes the way you perceive it. And it may even change the way you perceive it in real life. So um, I also added this sketch, because sometimes a sketch can talk more about the reality than uh, a f photography. Even though photography is the representation like this more truthful in terms of like the physical appearance, a sketch could be very close to the actual truth or some aspect of the truth, which I'm very interested in. And I wanted to finish with this portrait I took of Omer Harbel, where I kind of mix both. So there's like a physical representation with a photograph, and then overlaid on top something surreal to put the viewer into, in, in, into thinking that this is not the reality that you're looking at, but it is a representation of it, and also combining different images. Uh, thank you. <laughs>